In this video, I'm going to show you how to do this Magnets Media Animation in After Effects. I'm going to show you how to give it that signature look at the end and how to use the 3D camo in After Effects so you can recreate any of his videos in the future. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is drop my image in. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and scale this up just a little bit and bring it to the corner down here. I'm going to go over here and add a curves effect to this. It's going to make everything fit in just a little bit better. Next, I'm going to add my background and bring this up just a little bit past the frame. I'm going to add a tint to this. We're going to take this white value and make it orange. So now bring this to the bottom. Next, we're going to do our text. So I'm going to type his name out here. And I'm going to come over here and turn the stroke off on this. And I'm going to set my font size to bold. So I'm going to put a line break. And I'm going to click this so it's center aligned. Scale this up just a little bit. And I'm going to set the background color to black. Next, I'm going to add my subtitle. And this is going to be white. And I'm going to bring this font down as well. I'm going to use book. Bring this in and scale it down just a little bit. Next, we're going to do the text background. So I'm going to create a rectangle here. And I'm going to bring this down as well. I'm just going to line this up a little bit better. So next, we could take both of these. And I'm going to send them to Pecom. Battle text is what I'm going to name it. Okay, so I'm going to hide both of these now. And we're going to create our background text. So I'm going to use this first and middle name. Then we want to scale this way up. And I'm going to change the font as well to bold. I'm also going to turn on the stroke and make sure it's black. So rotate this by 90 degrees and play around with the size a little bit more. So I'm going to duplicate this once. In this one, I'm going to turn the fill off completely. I think this is looking pretty good. So now I'm going to select both of these and I'm going to pre-comp it again. I'm going to name this text background. Now I'm going to come into this pre-comp and I'm going to turn the background off so it's transparent. And I want to bring the stroke down just a little bit. Something like two is good. So on this initial one, I'm going to add the tint effect. I'm going to set a keyframe for what we map everything to. So I'm going to start at white. I'm going to come to yellow. Just a bright yellow like this. Then I'm going to come to blue. Is that a blue color like this? I'm going to select all of these keyframes. I'm going to toggle hold keyframes. And what that's going to do is turn off the interpolation so they just skip. Kind of like a cut. So now if we play it back, we can see it's flickering between these colors. It's a little too long, so I'm going to bring these in. Okay, I think it's pretty good. I'm going to copy these and paste them. Just a few times. Now if we come back, the colors are changing like this. So I'm going to duplicate it and apply the flip effect. And instead of flipping it like this, we're going to do 100 on the height and negative 100 on the width. And I'm going to reposition both of these to fit in the composition. So I think this is pretty good. Now we're ready to position this in 3D space. So I'm going to bring these to the very back, but not behind the background. I'm going to rename this background so we know what it is. So next, come to this, toggle switches in mode, and come onto 3D and just flip it on for everything. So at first nothing happens, but if we bring our background back, we have a Z axis now and we can bring everything back on the Z. So I'm just going to move everything around in 3D space so there's some pure likes to this. I'm going to put these two text backgrounds close to each other. We're going to bring this title text to the very top and we might have to bring it over just a little bit so it's in the position that we want it. So I think this is pretty good. We can close all that and we're going to add a new camera and you can just leave the default settings. Next, I'm going to add a controller for this camera and then this camera controller. So we could parent the camera to this camera controller and we could toggle 3D for this camera controller. So now we move this camera controller, it's going to move our camera. So I want to bring it in all the way. First, let's set a keyframe for this position where we want it to end. And let's come to the beginning and we want it to zoom all the way in. So let's bring it all the way in on the Z. So I'm way into my composition and I'm going to bring this back just so it's a little bit faster. And I'm going to set these to easy ease. Then I'm going to come in my graph editor and just give this a little bit of a taper down. So I think that's looking pretty good. I'm also going to come into my position here. And I'm going to split the dimensions and I'm going to turn off the X and Y uh, just by deleting these keyframes. Then I'm going to hit Alt on this Y position and I'm going to do Wiggle 220. So that's going to move it by about 20 pixels. So now I'm going to do Wiggle 220 on the X position as well. Now if we play it back, this is going to give us a little bit of a camera shake. So that's a little bit too much. I'm just going to change each one of these to 1 instead of 2. So now let's play that back and see how it looks. Okay, so I'm liking that a lot better. I'm just going to re-add my speed positioning here. So next we're going to go through and polish this up and make it look like Magnates Media. So first thing I'm going to do is add a adjustment layer and on this adjustment layer I'm going to add a vignette. And rename the first one to vignette and I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to rename the second one to optics. We're going to come in here and take an optic compensation and apply that to the top adjustment layer and I'm going to move this down one. So when we're zoomed all the way in, we want to set this optic compensation to be full. So I'm going to delete the vignette on this layer. Set a keyframe for the field of view. Make sure you check reverse lens distortion and you want to bring this way up. And when this camera is all the way zoomed out, we want this optics to be at zero. And I'm going to set this to easy ease and match our velocity in the speed graph. 
Now I'm going to come into this title text pre-comp and I'm going to take the glow effect and add that to the background. I'm going to turn this radius way up. I'm going to copy this and put it on the subtitle text as well. So now we can come back and we're going to do the same thing on this text background as well. We're going to turn the radius way up and I'm actually going to turn the stroke off on this first text layer. I'm going to turn this radius down just a little bit. We're going to take this stroke and maybe just make it one pixel. Okay, so the next step is to add overlays to this, uh, but before we do that, to make our render times faster, I'm going to render this comp out with no overlays, and then we're going to add our overlay to the comp that we rendered out. So I'm going to go ahead and export this, and then bring that MP4 back into After Effects. Okay, so I'm back in After Effects, and I've got my MP4 in my timeline, and we're going to go ahead and add our overlays. But before we do that, I'm going to add chromatic aberration to this entire clip. So I'm going to use quick chromatic aberrations. Uh, if you want to learn how to do chromatic aberrations, I have a video on that. Uh, where we go over how to make a preset that you could just drag into this. So I'm going to set this to something like 1 and 101. And you can see that's going to give us that RGB split down here. If I set this to full quality, you can see it better. Okay, so next we're going to go ahead and add our overlays. So the first one I'm going to add is this Fire Embers overlay. And I'm going to come over here into the blend mode to be screen. I'm also going to take this Dust overlay and scale it down just a little bit so everything fits. If you want to find the exact overlays I'm using, you can find them all in my Discord server. Okay, I set that to screen. Next, I'm going to add a noise texture, scale this down, and set it to screen as well. So finally, I'm going to add this sparkles and smoke overlay. Scale it down and set it to screen. So I think this is a little bit too much, so I'm going to bring the sparkles down, just so it's not as strong. So now if we let it play back, you can see we're really getting that magnets media fill with all these overlays. I hope you learned something from this, and if you did, check out my other videos here.